Thanks, Sherman. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, we're all awake. There we go. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start a timer here. This is our really well-titled super mega lightning talk. I'm going to try and explain data together in five minutes, something that we have never actually been able to do. We can't do, we can't do it in an hour and a half, so this is going to be interesting. Um, so what is it? I mean, uh, it's, it's worth noting that Data Together is a group of people, and if you ask any of us, you will get a different answer for me. It's a group of, of, of people identifying social patterns in distributed tech. Um, who's in it? Uh, it's intended to be a big tent. We quite intentionally want to grow it, but the four tent poles presently are EDGY, the Environmental Data and Governance Initiative, Protocol Labs, Query, and Public Lab. Uh, and I don't have a ton of time to go into what all those projects do. They're all great. Um, but it's sort of, to put this out there as a, as a bit of a starting point, uh, if the distributed web is this big paradigm shift, the people who are making the distributed web right now are making the mistakes that we'll have to deal with tomorrow. And so, which is not a fun way, it's kind of a negative way to sort of put this, but uh, it's also, I think, a really healthy framing for understanding how we can minimize those mistakes and how we can really make inroads on some of those problems. And uh, one of the big things that I think we've sort of recognized early on, given that our group sort of came together through a very uh, interdisciplinary approach, um, is we can sort of minimize some of those mistakes by broadening the amount of authorship that uh, goes into it, uh, specifically by bringing different types of authors to uh, these sort of paradigm shifting technologies. Um, so Data Together is very much a practical thing, despite the fact that all we do is talk. Uh, we also write code, but, like, um, but uh, we try to bring uh, existing authors and new authors together to identify patterns as a group. And so that, act in practical terms, that often means uh, getting people together in around specific subjects that we want to explore, or and trying to make sure that that group includes both people who are like existing, like uh, anointed technical people, and people who maybe come from a different uh, discipline. Um, and with the hope, the hope, I guess, is that if we identify these patterns, we make the distributed web easier to reason about. One of the big problems you have here is as we're sort of uncovering these new ways of thinking about stuff, if we can come up with ways of conveying them more clearly, ideally, and in a way that feels at least modestly accurate, um, we, should, we should be able to get more people to join this sort of authorial circle, which makes this really virtuous sort of thing. Um, and then, but then it's obviously like, uh, we sort of need to situate this in terms of the way that we think about, uh, in terms of now, um, and the distributed web is, is very much in early days. In terms of the way that we're thinking about it, the concepts have been around since as like, early as like 1960s, but the execution is sort of the thing that we're uh, re-realizing. Um, and so because of that, a lot of this is sort of happening in parallel. We're meeting, we're talking, and that is mutually informing people who are going back and practicing, and people, and ideally that's sort of forming this sort of glomming. And so you don't get a lot of like, Data Together produces a report once every quarter, and it's very easy to understand what we're doing. Uh, but uh, I, I do assure you that we're making really productive work. Um, and I think that uh, as, so I thought, I, I, rather than like try and explain to you what we do, I would just show some of how I approach it and uh, through the examples of this conference. Um, and so for me, pattern identification starts with asking careful questions. And so based on some of the talks we saw yesterday, there's a couple of questions that sort of jump to my mind and I think are a really good starting point. Uh, and then I'm going to try and take that and sort of like synthesize it into something of a stub and uh, I'd explain what I'd do with that uh, in the context of data together. Um, so things I would talk, uh, these are things I would take back. Um, Don started the day off with sort of this like question where I first, I first heard this question in, uh, in a data together talk, like why distributed? Like, which um, and when don't we need distributed? Again, not as a negative framing, but to put some sort of boundaries on when this is most useful and when this isn't most useful. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I'm gonna move really quickly through these. But um, Virac and Aether, uh, I think was really interesting because uh, if you're, I, as a, someone who programs a lot, I found that talk absolutely mind blowing. And uh, one of the things that was really interesting, if you could sort of like pull apart some of what he was saying on a technical level is like he's sort of using time as a methodology of skirting around the problems of consensus, which is like a really interesting and very abstract notion that I really want to dig into. Um, I'm going to email him in an aggressive sense. Um, Ray Owen and Maya, uh, for me, was really exciting. I pulled a bunch out of that. But uh, this notion that uh, <laughs> I was introduced to at least seven or eight new terms. I now know what shipping, slashing, and uh, a number of other things are now in a way that I didn't before. But the thing that really, really struck me is like you often have this concept of gatekeeping in communities, like how do we keep people in or put people out? Um, but in this fandom context, it was explained to me that like I, I think we came to a conclusion that it's a safe assumption that uh, the highly evolved syntax forms communities that are somewhat self-selecting. Um, and then can that be used as a sort of like pattern for avoiding 
um, like explicit or very uh, didactic govern governing structures. Um, also, most importantly, uh, I saw this on the way here. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Good Life Bag piece. I saw a Good Life Bag and I was like, it's fate. Um, yes. Uh, so I, I have officially killed five minutes. I'm going to go faster here. Um, Vimon, has, I think, really uh, made a good point of like, we need to come and meet users where they are. Uh, and so sometimes that means just operating as a layer underneath the existing internet. There's a censor pro censorship problem here. We should just work to keep the plumbing working the way it is. And I think that's a really interesting, like when do we employ that tactic and when do we not? Um, and, I suppose, uh, and then building on that, keeping the train on time, can we assist and how does that connect down with concrete problems uh, that are arguably far more important than our uh, distributed sort of like adventure? Um, and then for me, does that represent a chance to sort of, again, take a more intersectional approach? Can we actually uh, work across the boundary there? Does that represent an opportunity to reach out with someone who you perceive as being in need? And can that form a relationship that Gabe sort of referenced in the beginning as like his, re his relationship with the St. Lawrence market was like the foundation of a really virtuous sort of thing that came out of that. So maybe there's something there. Anyways, uh, what I would do with all of that, all those questions is quite literally take them and put them back to a group of people I consider incredibly smart. And then uh, as someone who is actively building distributed technologies, the, what everybody says in those conversations directly informs the work that I do trying to build distributed tech. And so. Um, my takeaway, like just trying to sort of synthesize some of this together, I would put this as like a stub as like, and something I would iterate on in my head um, is just like, for me, our networks has highlighted our shared desire for alternative digital infrastructures, but specifically our capacity to sort of iterate on those infrastructures, this desire to have that uh, come into contact with communities and their desire to sort of be able to mutate the plumbing that they're working on. Um, and for me, that speaks very directly to this notion in the technical space that we're working on, this idea of like versioned protocols, this concept of future-proofing your pro protocol because you can put a version number on it. But then it maybe suggests that we should think about also, which would add a lot of layer of complexity, but like the idea of branching a protocol. And like, what does that mean where one community may have a different set of needs that is arguably the same version, but a different sort of implementation. And so that's like a high level, hey, maybe we need to start working toward that. Maybe we need to surface that in a technical roadmap. Um, but then, that also folds back, feeds back on this sort of uh, uh, how, where does this, where is that coming from? It's this sort of a very post web 1.0 desire for me. That's a very uh, interesting place to sort of think. Um, and uh, I, for me, it's just a recognition that digital infrastructure is very intertwined with us. And uh, some of our needs require messing with the plumbing that connects us. And I think that's some, like a general takeaway that we're all coming with, but um, that has concrete and immediate applications that like I can just take and put into place tomorrow, this idea that we need documentation as this vital connective tissue between someone who's iterating on a version protocol concept, if we can convey that across, great. But then do we need a new kind of documentation, one that explains sort of our conceptual approach? And is that necessary to sort of bridge some of these, create more authors in this space? And I think that's it. You should go there and you should join us. Uh, if you have any interest in iterating on these problems, the stuff you bring to the table actually will affect practitioners. I think that's it. Cool.